Hey, it's Peter Coffin. How are you doing? I was just thinking to myself, ah, you know what would be great? If I could go to the drive through and order an end to war. Yeah, I'd also go through and ask them to like and comment and subscribe and all that nonsense. That'd be what I'd do at the drive through Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, it's getting so easy to just order stuff, isn't it? Like, I go on Amazon and I do my Christmas shopping now. You can get a new car on Carvana, which I don't know why they named it that, but they exist, so it doesn't matter. So that very same thing has got to work for exerting your will on the power structures. Supply and demand, right? They supply what you demand. So all you got to do is pull up to that order window and say, I want an end to war. Now, anyone watching with even a lick of sense is going, hey, you're probably not saying what you really think right now. <laughs> what is that? What is, is that, is that, is that, uh, yeah, they call it, um, sarcasm, that thing. You're using that, aren't you? Boy, you dastardly old wink master, you, you and your saying things with a glimmer in your eye that indicates you're making a point. Ah, yeah, 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 I know your game. So I've made like videos and documentaries about consumption as activism for a very long time. A very long time. It's been an important subject for me because people think that in order to affect change, they do the exact same thing they do to, like, get Power Rangers action figures, I guess. I don't know why I picked Power Rangers. But, you know, in the exact same way that a Star Wars or a Marvel fan would say, well, if you don't like it, just don't go see it and they'll stop making it. People who want to change, like, factory farming and stuff go, well... I don't eat meat because I want to make the world a better place for all life, which is obviously foolhardy and not how things work. Factory farming is not the result of people eating meat. It's a mode of production that yields returns in a certain way that is the one that makes most sense currently. That isn't driven by demand because you could, in theory, do the exact same thing without factory farming. You would just have different profit margins, perhaps ones that are less favorable. People say, well, then that means the problem is corporate greed, but that's actually not the problem either. Greed is an ideal and not a material condition. Yes, there are greedy people in the world. I'm not going to pretend that there aren't, but if you are talking about doing something correctly with the specifications of a socialized mode of production with privatized appropriation of product and profit, then you talk about maximizing all quantitative measurements of the transaction. I know that's probably not the most friendly way to explain what I'm trying to say, but that's not really the point I'm after. The point that I'm making is that, first off, if the majority of people became vegans, all that would do was necessitate a higher profit margin in the meat market and therefore necessitate more exploitative practices. Second off, it's not as if stopping feeding animals with soy and starting feeding people with it brings down soy production. In fact, I'd argue it probably brings it up. And that's one of the ways that bad farming happens where they don't rotate crops and the soil gets depleted and everybody's like, ah, oh, it's destroying the environment because you need to feed the animals. Well, guess what? If you stop feeding cows with the beans and you start feeding people with it, you still need the beans. And finally, you have exactly the same amount of pull as somebody else at the grocery store. And your decision has as much bearing. If you were to go into the grocery store and advocate for a vegan diet, people would be like, stop. I don't want to hear this. I'm buying garbage to eat for the week. I don't need your slightly more expensive vegan garbage. I, I just want my crappy cheap garbage. Thank you. Seriously, have you had an Impossible Whopper? It tastes the same as a goddamn Whopper. It's a little more expensive, and it's actually a little bit better on my insides. The real Whopper, it doesn't treat me so well, so I get the Impossible one. But that's the only reason. I don't think it's going to change a goddamn thing other than how bad my poops are.
So a bunch of folks went through a Starbucks drive through and demanded that the war end. Yeah, I laid down all that groundwork for that. But here we go. Well, I've worked in fast food, and if a line of people showed up that were all honking their horns in the drive through I can tell you that my priority would not be to stop war. It would be to start another one. Wow, I hate that. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for asking. You doing all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Just establishing some rapport. Got to go into sales mode here. Do you know, as you obviously know, there's a genocide going on in Gaza, and over 14,000 people have been killed in the last 47 days. 6,000 of these have been children. Yeah, the right tone to adopt is definitely that of an infomercial. Nothing has changed my mind on, on more things uh, that I can remember than infomercials. You probably also know Starbucks issued a lawsuit against Starbucks workers, uh, United and Union, just because they put out a statement in solidarity with the Palestinians as bombs are raining down on their civilians. We're distraught by that. I don't think that guy wanted to do this. I think that guy had like a significant other that was like, we should do this. Yeah, I agree. That would be good. Do you know that Starbucks former owner... Hey, did you know that? <laughs> what? Coming in hot there, man. Do you know that Starbucks former owner, Howard Schultz, whose net worth is worth $3.3 billion? That's sick, by the way. Hey, did you know that I get paid a low wage to stand here and serve you? And that anything that you're saying might as well be said to a brick wall because the same thing will happen in response. Unless, of course, you end this with and a venti mocha latte. And who continues to benefit from his time at Starbucks, even though he sold the company, was one of the biggest individual donors to the Israeli military. Um, money that he earned off the backs of employees like you went to drop bombs on kids in Palestine. Yeah, you're very sympathetic towards my cause, the cause of the fast food worker. Thank you very much for that. Um, you're making my day bad. Did you know that? Did you know that my day is worse because I've now heard this speech from 12 fucking people? Yeah, thanks for reminding me how little power I have in terms of world events. So little power that I have to sit here and endure a long line of people for an hour all saying this same nonsense shtick about crap I have no control over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're real sympathetic to my plight. Thank you for that. It's because of this that we all are gathered here today. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. Marriage, that sacred bond, that blessed arrangement, that dream within a dream. This lady's talking like the Starbucks drive through is church. Eh, maybe for some people it kind of is. I don't know. We want to express deep solidarity with all the workers. Oh, well, oh, great. Thanks for the solidarity uh, and for doing the solidarity in this specific way at my job. Uh, you know, a place where I have uh, no input at all over anything you're saying. We want to do what we can to end complicity with Israel as it illegally occupies Palestine. We want to do what we can to stop Israel's illegal occupation of Palestine. And that's why we're gathered here today at the Starbucks drive through I hope that you will all unionize and... I hope that you will all union... <laughs> Your demands are that the Starbucks workers union... Oh yeah, nothing's gonna stop Israel from dropping 6,000 bombs on a residential area faster than a, a single Starbucks in Milwaukee, Wisconsin unionizing. So I'd like to order a, end the genocide, please. Uh, what size? Is that a grande um, end the genocide or, or a venti? 
end the genocide because I have that here and end the genocide. It's just a matter of, you know, giving you the right size. We don't want you to drive up to this window and change your order because that means messes us up back here real bad. Uh, we end up having to, you know, stop people from doing like, hey, you don't know. It's not. It's not a grande and the genocide. It's a venti uh, and the genocide. You got You got to You got to make it a second time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I appreciate it. I understand. But at least my message was heard. So I appreciate your time. And if you're willing to accept, I have a tip for you. Sounded a little bit like she knew she was out of line to me. Um, threw in that whole tip thing. Smooth things over a bit. You know. Hmm. Huh? Yeah, so this uh, was done by the Party of Socialism and Liberation, a uh, communist party. And I don't like saying that because uh, I am one who communes, uh, communist. I see stuff like this and I go, I do the I do the Squidward thing where he's on the ground going, future that, I do that. That's what this type of political action does to me. It makes me very, uh, very concerned. And here's the thing. I know that there's going to be a lot of people that watch this video and go, you're a communist and you're making fun of this? Isn't this what you're all about? Well, that's specifically why I don't like it. I am not about anything like this. Again, at the beginning of this video, I said a lot of my work specifically is about how consumption isn't activism. Consumerism as a vehicle for societal change is nonsense. It's nothing. It does nothing. And this is just an amazing example of it, in my opinion. Like, I'm often talking about lifestyleism and how various political choices are presented in the same way uh, they would in a market, for instance, be it identity, um, party, uh, policy issues. They're, they're presented in a sort of fandom mode, a consumptive mode in which you really don't get anywhere. You're putting on different t-shirts that have different slogans, and that's kind of it. But this is literally people showing up to a Starbucks drive through and ordering an end to the genocide. This isn't for social change. It's for these people. They're doing something that's for them. It's for them to feel good about themselves. They showed up to Starbucks, and they... They sure told them, while also being very careful to notate that they are for the workers, not against the workers, because the workers are the people that they're ultimately barking all their crap at, and they have to make sure that you understand that we're not going after them because we don't want to get canceled on the communist Facebook group. I'm not going to make a big thing about advocating for this, but I'm part of a political organization that's nothing like this called the Center for Political Innovation. And I highly recommend you check that out if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description if if you'd like. I'm actually speaking at an event on December 2nd in Portland, Oregon, if you're interested. But my ultimate point here is not like these people are bad. Of course, they're not bad. They think that they're doing something to change the world. And this is the mindset of the consumer applied to the feeling of a need for activism. And that's not going into all of the weird social clout crap. I kind of mentioned it with the Facebook group part because, I mean, basically everybody's trying to outdo each other on social media anyways. But that's not that's that's well beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. The thing that's going to change any anything going on in the Middle East isn't if you go to Starbucks and order an end to the genocide. I'm sure these are all lovely people. I, I, like, I know that there's probably some channel out there that would talk about how stupid these assholes are, but I, I don't think that. I, I think that their heart's in the right place. I will also say that there is a very fandom-oriented way to talk about the Israel-Palestine conflict, uh, and it ultimately ends up turning into Islamophobia versus anti-Semitism. Pick your team. But the thing that's going to change that stuff is just power. That's it. Until there is power enough to subvert the imperial interests, the imperial interests shall not be subverted. So unless, unless you're doing something that's building power and it's not this, you're not doing anything. Stop thinking that you're doing stuff. Stop doing stuff like this. It just makes people hate you. Okay? 
Like, I get that you care about something and it matters to you, but this is the way to go about it that makes people, not just the fast food workers present for the event, but a lot of other people who see this video you guys uploaded, that it makes people hate you. My name is Peter Coffin. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll talk to you again soon.